In a recent video, I used this example of an awkward typing situation with Angular forms to show how TypeScript type guards can be used to check for null values. So the demonstration of how to use a type guard was fine, so still feel free to go watch that video if you're interested in that. But using it in this specific situation with forms turned out to be a pretty bad example. There is a much better and easier way to deal with this situation using a method from Angular Forms that I didn't know about, but I discovered thanks to the helpful comments on the last video. So first, let me recap the situation. So I have a form that has the purpose of accepting data for a new checklist. I have an add checklist type that just expects a title that is a string. And I have an add method in my service that is expecting an add checklist type. Now, what I want to do is I want to take data from my form, which should contain a title, and I want to send that off to my add method in the service. This form contains all the fields required for the checklist, and I just want to create that checklist. So this is all simple enough, but TypeScript is having none of it. It's complaining that the data doesn't match the add checklist type because the title value from the form might be null. It has a type of string or null. But what's the deal with that? We have a title field in our form that is required and initialized to a string, so why should it ever be null? So the problem is that form groups and controls have a reset method that we can call. And what this is going to do is it's going to set the value of that field back to null, or in the case of resetting the whole form, all of the controls are gonna be set to null. So this is why when we are using typed forms, it is going to assume that these values might always be null. And if we're trying to assign that to a type that can't be null, then it's going to cause problems. So what we can do to solve this is to use a non-nullable form instead. So when using the form builder, we can do fb.nonnullable.group, and this is going to set all of our controls to be non-nullable. So now if that reset method is called, it is going to reset the value back to its initial value rather than to null. So if we check our type error now, we can see that we no longer have null as a possible value for our title. But this is where I messed up in the previous video. So I knew about non-nullable forms, but I didn't pay enough attention to this error and I just assumed it wasn't working. Anyway, why should I care when I have the power of TypeScript type guards to help me out in this situation? So I just ignored this and went with the type guard approach. Well, as it turns out, there is a problem with using a type guard in this situation, at least the one that I created. If you want to know more about why, I'd recommend reading the pinned comment on the previous video. But in this video, we're just gonna focus on the solution I probably should have gone with in the first place. So what I was missing was this little trick. So if instead of using value to access the value of our form group, if we instead use get raw value, everything suddenly works. So to see why, let's change this back to just dot value. And if we hover over our type error, we can see that the value we get here is actually a partial. So what this means is that any of the controls in our form could actually be undefined. We only have one field in our form, but still our single title field could actually be undefined. Our checklist forms type is assuming that we might not have values for all of these fields. Now, the reason for this is that similarly to how our form could have been reset, we can also grab individual controls and disable them. So by calling disable on this title form control, its value is no longer going to be included in dot value. However, if we use get raw value instead, it ignores the disabled status of any controls and instead returns values for everything that is included in the form. So this works in this case because I'm not disabling any controls at any point, so I can just assume that they're not going to be disabled. But if you are disabling controls in your form, then you would need to make sure you are still handling that properly. Okay, that's it for this video. Uh, if you want to join my support club of people who have been hurt by Angular forms, feel free to hit subscribe before you leave, and I hope you have a great day.